We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Bradford Cross, co-founder of Prismatic. Bradford, welcome. Hey, thanks. So recently you guys rolled out Prismatic. It's gotten critical acclaim. Uh, you've done a really good job. The site looks brilliant. Can you tell us a little bit about what Prismatic is, briefly, mm -hmm. and then how you came up with the idea? Sure. So uh, Prismatic is kind of a newspaper made for the current era of the internet. Um, we kind of assume social networks of all kinds, and we say that we need to be able to interoperate with those, both in terms of the social context that they provide and in terms of you know, the fact that you always want to share and discuss everything. Um, so that's basically, and because we're native users of those, that's basically kind of how we naturally came up with the idea. It's like, hey, these are great. We use this for this kind of dialogue already. Um, but what we really want to do is kind of have a more focused experience that embraces this. And when we looked at products like, um, say, Google News or other aggregators or even some of the kind of discussion forums of the previous generation of the Internet, we just felt like, you know, you can do so much more now. So let's give that a try. Right. And so when you guys were building up your team and thinking about this problem, how did you narrow in on building, you know, Prismatic in its first incarnation? Sure. You know, importing items from Twitter. How yeah. did you make that decision? Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting because we've spent over a year on it and iterated on lots of different versions of the product. We've actually thrown whole versions of the product away um, entirely. And um, when we knew from the beginning that Twitter was kind of the network for us to begin on because people were using it mostly for content sharing in that way. That's since changed because Facebook has kind of focused more on this stuff too. So it's nice that it's becoming more broadly done. But in the beginning, it was mostly Twitter content sharing. So we started with that and we started doing experiments and figuring out, you know, as Twitter users and all of our friends being users, um, how do we make something that's compelling and that's new and fresh and not just kind of like, hey, we're refiltering your timeline. Because we always felt all along, you know, we use Twitter every day. We don't want to try to make a thing that should just be in there. Right. Twitter's good the at point. being Twitter. Exactly. So, exactly. So now, now the site, you know, when people try and look at it, I mean, it obviously looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. It loads very quickly. It's mm -hmm. very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys clearly did a great job there. Under the covers, there's a lot of serious machine learning yeah. going on. Like, t yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So there's a couple of... For us, technical problems come in two flavors. There's really like the hardcore software engineering, and there's more the really hardcore research kind of uh, tech, more technical problems. Um, so, you know, on the engineering side, the thing is very difficult to do um, in and of itself because it's very large scale. Everything is real time. So, like, all the articles you're seeing are coming in right away, right? Because we believe, like, if you want to be a newspaper for this generation, that's a critical part. So you're dealing with huge volume of data in real time, plus when requests are coming in to get news feeds, they're being re-ranked and all kinds of stuff is happening dynamically. So that's really hard to pull off. That's kind of like a search engine. Um, but not like a search engine are these other research problems where you're basically needing to do better topic classification in order to organize news feeds into different groups or also do things like, for example, um, personalized re-ranking where you need to know, you know, who are your friends, what are the things that you do, what are the kinds of things that you like, and then how do I learn from that and Perfect. get more. So l let's break those up into two. So on yeah. the software side and when you're looking at real-time search, what would you say was the greatest technical challenge or hurdle you guys had to overcome? Yeah. Yeah. In, in um, getting there? There, it's, it was probably, so there, we weave together many different systems. There's crawling and polling and all kinds of stuff happening that brings in lots of data. But actually, that stuff's being routed into this one really complicated service where the actual news feeds are being created and a lot of things are happening. Um, and I would say that that particular problem was very, very hard to solve and make fast. Understood. Yeah. And if we go over to the research side, and I guess what you're talking about is like an ontology and classification of mm. topics, right? Mm. And so how were you able to classify that? Because when I first saw the product, mm. it made me realize, it, it reminded me a little bit of core and how mm. uh, topics and articles were tagged, mm -hmm. right? And almost semantically, mm -hmm. uh, the system is saying, okay, this is about X, Y, and Z. Yeah. How did you get to that so quickly? Yeah, well, it's hard to, it was, we, it, it, initially we didn't even necessarily know that that was the right way to solve the problem. Um, but when we worked with people more and more, we understood that like diversification among their interests and uh, you know having an understanding of fine-grained things that people are into was really important. So we knew we had to solve it, um, but it was very difficult and it took months, you know, because we had to try lots of different things and throw away different ideas. So was there ever a point where you guys were sitting down and saying like we don't know if we can crack this or put out a product? The, I mean alpha? there were definitely yeah there were definitely times in the spring when uh, Ari and I went back to the drawing board after our first product where we knew like we're in for something really hard now because the basically the first thing we had tried we knew it kind of wasn't enough and we had proven to ourselves 
with real users and data that like we had to do something like this or it wasn't going to be enough. Um, but we just kept going. I mean, we were we were confident that it could be solved, but we knew kind of like that we might have to try one, you know, many different things in, the, in an area of solutions until something would work. And that was, in fact, what happened, right? It was quite a while, and we tried many different things. Sure. sure. <laughs> well, congratulations yeah. on, on getting over that hurdle. Thanks. So now let's just pull back a little bit mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and talk about this idea of building on top of Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I believe, I mean, we're both heavy users mm -hmm. of Twitter, yep. is that um, Twitter users are power users. Yeah. Uh, they want their own feed experience or they want their own list experience yep. and they've been trained over the last three or four years or however long they've been using it yep. to kind of have that control over their feed. Yep. But now you're also building on top of Twitter. Yep. So part of your value proposition is to siphon off mm. some of those users. Yep. How, how do you guys think about that? Right. So we, um, we use Twitter probably just as much or maybe a little more after becoming like really heavy users of Prismatic. And uh, the reason that works this way is basically, you know, Twitter is in the same way that Facebook was for Twitter initially, this really nice way of getting distribution, but at the same time, um, you know, creating a new user base um, from one that also continues to use that other product. So you end up having this kind of nice symbiotic relationship rather than kind of a, a, a straight up like taking of users that were doing X here and now they're doing X over here instead. Because um, Twitter's a fundamentally different and disjoint experience than Facebook. And I use both. I use Twitter more personally. Some people use Facebook a lot more. And we get a lot of people that want to use Prismatic more but don't feel super engaged with it because they're more engaged with Facebook. And we're not doing great stuff with Facebook yet. Um, and then I think there's going to be lots of other social networks and that's where it becomes really exciting. So it's, now is part yeah. of your plan, if you can share, yeah. to integrate other people's feeds and signals from other yeah. networks into the Abs prism Absolutely, absolutely. And okay. we talk with people about this all the time and this <coughs> is where it starts to get super exciting. Obviously Twitter and Facebook are kind of these foundational networks we feel like where um, I suspect both will go over a billion users, um, probably you know several billion. Um, you know, if they're able to execute and make that happen, then they're going to be such a part of the fabric of the internet that they'll just be kind of an afterthought, but still very important, of course. Um, and then there's going to be all these other little fine grained networks which are tied into them and already exist, and that's going to continue to grow. All the way from like stuff for engineers like GitHub, stuff like for sure. designers like Dribble, you have like Etsy, Kickstarter, all these things popping up. Airbnb, for example, is kind of like this in a way. They're, they're kind of marketplaces, but um, they also feel like they're more part of this kind of like social, more kind of grassroots era sure. of the internet. So I think like all that stuff coming together is really what's most exciting about this. So my, you know, so final question is, yeah. the first time I saw Prismatic, obviously it looked great, mm -hmm. understood what it, you know, how it was organizing my Twitter feed and it did a, did a very good job to, mm -hmm. right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. It made me think that that was actually a better experience than the discover button mm -hmm. that Twitter introduced mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that kind of what you're going after, is to kind of say, okay, you have your native feed experience, mm -hmm. you have your DMs, you have your list, whatever you create, but in terms of discovering content, yeah. you can't get everything in your stream and we're going to organize it for you. Yeah. Is that how you're thinking about Prismatic? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, a, it's a question with nuanced answers because, okay. for example, Twitter should do and will do something that's really nice. I don't know if it will be in the Discover, but it'll be somewhere. It'll be something like Facebook News Feed for Twitter. Um, and that kind of stuff makes a lot of sense and it kind of tries to be a little bit smarter about the stuff you want to see and help you see and discover new stuff. And that should exist. There's actually a thing in Prismatic called the social feed, which is basically what that should be. Um, and we don't even use it anymore um, because it's kind of like not really part of the core experience of, of Prismatic. Um, but for what we want to do, it's more about taking, you know, you have this core experience on Facebook and this core experience on Twitter, and we want to be a kind of a different experience where you're finding new stuff, and it's cutting across everything and not focused on just one. And one of the, th the problems we think that Twitter or Facebook or whoever is going to have when they try to expand their product to include all this kind of stuff inside of it is it's going to become very complicated uh, and alienate core users, so I think that's what's kind of been happening lately with these like social readers on Facebook, for example. Absolutely. It's kind of like, oh, I don't know, this isn't what I want, this isn't what I came for, and you know, it can grow very fast, of course, because it's huge and it's Facebook and you do <clears> these <throat> viral hacks, but eventually people are like, 
yeah, this isn't really what I kind of bargained on here at Facebook. And I think there's going to be a lot of experimentation over the next, you know, couple of years among all these different networks and different media companies and so on to find out like what everybody's role is. But we just believe there's a role for kind of like a higher level newspaper concept. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, good luck to you guys and congratulations on the release. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Patrick. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It was awesome, man. You did cool. great. Awesome. Sweet.